Hello everyone, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to the first of what will be many top 5 God of War videos coming to the channel. Because seeing as we are now at the end of the Nordic saga of games, I thought what better way could we celebrate it than by ranking the strongest Nordic gods we have seen in this series so far. So, to do this, we will be talking about each of their individual abilities, what makes them so unique to their own pantheon, and most importantly, how exactly do they stack up against their competition? Because each of the gods are really different in their own way, for so making them even unique to the God of War series. With that said, minor ground rules for this one everyone. The tier list will be based around the strength displayed in game as well as that of lore. For so, the difficulties of boss fights like Gnar will not be the biggest factors in this tier list, but understandably will still be taken into account as it does display the feats of strength that they do bring to the table. Also, this video will solely be focusing on gods in the Norse saga, so previous established gods like Kratos and Athena will understandably not be making the cut here. And also worth noting, because I have to really emphasize this point, this tier list will mostly focus on lore and the gods of this series of games, meaning that the Berserkers and Valkyries will not be making the cut here. Sorry Hrolf and Sigrun, in saying that, these two could most certainly hold a candle to some of the contenders we have here. But hey, it's my tier list, and I at least had to establish some ground rules for it. Now as always everyone, just a quick reminder that if possible, let's first get this video to about 1000 likes. It's a small thing, but it really does go an absolute mile here, especially with YouTube's new and rather cruel changes to its terms of service when it does come to video game violence. Plus hey, it does give me more incentive to make more top fives like this. So with that said, what other ones would you actually like to see me make? Please do comment down below. But anywho, let's get right into things. Now to kick things off, at number 5, we are starting with the former Valkyrie Queen of Asgard and the former Witch of the Woods, Freya of Vanaheim. Now Freya has been a very important and pivotal figure in the Nordic saga. By being both ally and enemy, we are able to get a grand idea and scope of just how powerful the goddess is. Because when we do first meet her, she is still quite a shell of her former self. A husk of the warrior goddess in the Aesir Vanir War and Valkyrie Queen to that of Odin. But even being crippled magically to the world of Midgard, restrained with a hex that broke her warrior spirit, Freya still showed incredible feats of strength in both magic and combat, being able to cure Atreus and even revive a literal dead giant with Cedar Magic, which is no easy feat mind you. And later down the line, when her wrath is invoked by Kratos, she is able to go toe to toe with the Spartan, once reclaiming her Valkyrie wings, pushing him unlike their previous encounters, as well he didn't actually know it was her. And in saying that, Freya nearly won this encounter when Kratos let down his guard. Whilst this did end in a no contest, Thanks Atreus. It's still important to note that very few can keep up with the sheer ferocity Kratos does bring to battle, and I think the battles against Needhog and Odin can give us a rough idea of just how capable she is at full strength. Now unfortunately, it is actually quite difficult to gauge how much stronger she is at full strength, because upon being freed from Odin's Hex, she does become a companion character, so we don't quite see her perform those crazy feats of strength we have seen previously, but it simply cannot be understated with what she does bring to the table. She is a Vanir goddess Valkyrie queen that has fought in wars against gods and can even revive the dead. I'd say that's a 
pretty damn good reason to be up here. I know some may suggest Gnar, as she is most certainly a harder boss fight, but prior to Ragnarok, Gnar was actually never mentioned, and the feats of strength we see her perform are solely from her boss fight. So she does kind of scrape the bottom of the list here, but Freya simply has more to show than what Gnar does. Now at number 4, we have a son of Odin, and that is the all-seer of Asgard, Heimdall. Whilst Heimdall's appearance in this installment was very brief, Boy, did he make an impression. Being as sharp-tongued as he was cunning, Heimdall is nothing short of a venomous zealot, one completely devoted to the Allfather's visions and dreams. Being a child of the Allfather naturally puts a chip on his shoulder, but his arrogance is not misplaced. Being gifted with that of Bifrost eyes, Heimdall is nigh untouchable. Being able to read someone's movements, and even their thoughts if he's able to retain eye contact, Heimdall is a special kind of sinister, one that is largely drowned in his own hubris because he deems himself as untouchable. But as we have seen, he is not quite as invincible as his half-brother Boulder. Much like how the Mistletoe is a niche kryptonite, the only true way to defeat Heimdall is by overloading his senses. Forcing him to focus on multiple objects at a time causes Heimdall to break his concentration. Thus, it is possible to defeat him, but the only two characters that have been canonically established to crumble this ability, or at least challenge it, is Thor and Kratos. We can probably throw Odin in there, as he is the Allfather, but defeating Heimdall requires a lot of creative thinking. Now, behind this, we do see some other impressive abilities. Whilst no way near as physically durable as the rest of his family. Heimdall's ability to tap into the Bifrost is what grants him gifts that no one else has ever seen, such as his ability to realm shift on a whim and harness pure Bifrost to turn into a literal weapon for himself. So Heimdall definitely has a very unique utility kit, but he doesn't quite crack the top three here, and that is because he simply isn't as strong as his siblings. So, should their main ability fail, then they have the ability to rely on their own power to at least stay up to pace with Kratos. In saying that though, nothing was more satisfying than punching Heimdall in the face. Now, if Heimdall was the unstoppable force, then his younger sibling would most certainly be the immovable object. And that is, of course, Asgard's child of light and the man invulnerable to all threats. Physical, Physical or magical. Or magical. Aye, aye. Thanks, Mimir. Boulder. Boulder is an interesting anomaly in the God of War universe, as he does derive from Odin and Freya. He is effectively the love child of the Aesir Vanir War. So, with his parents in mind, there was naturally very high expectations for him, ones that he most certainly did live up to. Whilst not physically imposing, Boulder is as tough as they come, waging the fury of a madman with the strength of a god. You more or less get an unhinged juggernaut. Plus, roll in the ability to literally not die, and you basically get the best tracker in all of the Nine Realms. In terms of strength, Boulder really, really does not come up short at all, as he's able to push Kratos to his very limit at the start of the 2018 game. He also knocks out Jormungandr, someone that Thor actively goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with during Ragnarok itself. In short, Boulder, whilst largely overlooked due to being immortal, is a lot stronger than what I think people give him credit for. And even with that said, that immortality is just as much of a crutch as it is a benefit. Because if I'm honest, that immortality is the determining factor as to how he kept up with Kratos for so long. 
because every lick of damage is more or less averted due to the fact he just heals through it. I mean, hell, he even survived a broken freaking neck. And even when he loses his immortality, mind you, again, to the most obscure thing possible, the sensation of snow and the heat from the Blades of Chaos give him the ability to tap into elemental damage. So whilst he may be overlooked, it simply cannot be understated just how strong he is. And the reason why he tops Heimdall here is because whilst their abilities are kind of similar, at least in the sense that they have extremely niche weaknesses. Boulder has proven that he's physically stronger than Heimdall, but in saying that, if these two were to ever fight, it would probably never end. Now at number two, it's the Jotnar Slayer and wielder of Mjolnir himself, for Odinson. Throughout our time in the lands of Midgard, we are given the misfortune of being educated to his legend. How with Mjolnir in hand, he has carved a legacy with thunder and lightning crackling throughout the night, bathing the lands of Midgard in the rivers of innocence. Thor is the closest thing we ever actually get to a physical equal to Kratos during the saga, with both being able to trade blows with each other and wreak havoc throughout the land. Thor is by all intents and purposes a destroyer, someone who revels in the legend cast upon his name, one so bloody that it allows him to stand out from his father. In fact, Thor is so incredibly strong that Mimir of all people was unsure if Kratos was strong enough to defeat the Odinson. Now, in terms of physical power, Thor is tremendously strong, so much so that when we first encounter him, he quite literally physically manhandles Kratos. I mean, for God's sake, he kills him and then defibrillates him. But yes, in terms of pure, raw power, Thor may actually be physically more strong than Kratos. But I will say that could go either way. Knowing of Thor and how he was able to kill Falmer in a single strike, as well as hit Jormungandr so hard, he's displaced to another timeline. It gives you an idea of just how ridiculously strong Thor is. But he's not strictly limited to raw power alone, as it is largely complemented by Mjolnir. A weapon that not only extends his brutality, but also allows him to channel his affinity for lightning. So you don't just have to worry about the blunt trauma of the hammer, but the crackles of lightning that ripples from every strike swung. It's vicious. And to cap this section off, Thor is prone to berserker rages, something that will laser his focus and send him into a blood rage, literally allowing lightning to ride through his veins. Thor is a tremendously strong adversary, one that embodies many values that the Kratos of all did have. Now, the reason why he tops out Boulder here is due to his strength and utility. Being as strong as Kratos, if not so stronger than him, easily topples him above Boulder. Plus, we have seen the devastation that Hammer can cause, and it is severe. Now, of course, to no one's surprise here, in our number one spot, we do have the Grand Allfather and God King of the Aesir, Odin. Being one of the three slayers of Ymir, the first primordial, Odin really did earn his place in the Nine Realms as King of Asgard. He fought for his title and spawned a legion of children that embodied his will. Whilst we do not see him physically pull off any incredible feats of strength, we do see him utilize something just as dangerous, his mind. Unlike his children, who rely on their strength and battle tactics, Odin has been able to weaponize knowledge, things he has literally learnt since the dawn of the Nine Realms. 
weapons, utilizing texts and magics from lands beyond his own as weapons of mass destruction. Odin utilizes his mind as his greatest strength, and with knowledge into that of the unknown is what is the most terrifying aspect about this character. It is extremely dangerous to underestimate what he will do to achieve his own goals. And this is us not even touching on his spear, Gungnir, which he later empowers with a magical noose that was grafted to a strand of the world tree. By combining the two together, he's able to empower Gungnir, showing that even on the fly, he's able to craft the weapon out of nothing. And Odin himself clearly shows that he's very proficient with a spear. Whilst Gungnir isn't the same spear that killed Ymir, it's very evident that he has not lost a step. Being able to go toe to toe with Kratos and Atreus at the same time, and is only defeated once Freya joins the fight. So even in his older age, the Allfather still remains strong. Now honestly, Thor and Odin could very easily be switched out with each other here, as Thor embodies the physical end of the spectrum, whilst Odin embodies the knowledge end of the spectrum. Both specialize in different things at their own end. But with Odin being the Allfather, the one that everyone derives from, and well, he killed four. I think that his placement at the top here is pretty understandable. I think that under different circumstances, four might end up having the edge over Odin, but we never do see that. And for so, I will leave the top five the way it currently is. With that said, everyone, who would you say are your top five strongest gods in the Nordic series? I would love to hear what you all have to say. And I mean, hey, you don't have to use the same criteria I have here to rank for gods in your own way. So honestly, go nuts. And again, if you really enjoyed this, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up. And most importantly, let me know down below if you have any top five suggestions that you would like to see me make. But for now, everyone, that has been it for me. So as always, everyone, stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting as Ragnarok is finally over. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon.